Yeah, we're back at the park. Bring you another upper body calisthenics workout. We're starting off with the muscle up, a classic two in one developer. This will smash your entire back, chest, shoulders, and triceps because it combines a full range of motion pull up, pretty comparable to a sternum pull up, and a dip. One fluid motion, explosive, very difficult. Some of you guys can't even do one. And so, if that's you, I would recommend explosive pull-ups supersetted with straight bar dips because we are using this as a pre-exhaustion tool. Everything that comes after this point will have us using less weights. That said, if you can do these muscle ups just with lower reps, go for it. You don't need to be getting 10 like me. So here, I end up getting 10, 8, 7, which I'm very pleased with because I'm 185 pounds in this video. Can you tell? I put on some lean muscle tissue, man, because I've never been this lean at this weight. Not saying I'm super defined or anything, but look at the mass. Look at the muscle. It's coming along. And I haven't lost my coordination or body weight gains either. So next time I get shredded, whew, the PRs will be crazier. So that's it for that. One pro tip I can give you is to lean back at the bottom and then lean forward to the top while rotating the wrists. A lot of guys get caught because of poor technique, not because they're too weak. Next, we got the knees up, weighted chin. Since you're tired from those muscle ups, you will not be able to go as heavy. For reference, I'm only using 70 pounds, yet look how much I'm struggling. The knees up gives you a maximum latch stretch because in order to fully lengthen them, you need to have some degree of spinal flexion. And then with the backpack on, it's pulling your weight backwards, so kind of turning into a hybrid lift, like a row and pull up. So it's even more difficult than if you have a weight belt. And then the neutral positioning is also best for biasing the lats. So I chose that because these bars don't have it and you can kind of get that supination simultaneously. So it works both ways. Then we got the weighted dip, classic builder, three sets of 15 to 20. Again, you don't need to go stupid heavy as long as you're getting very close to failure. So it might take 20 reps and for some of you, maybe body weight is all you're gonna need but it's been proven you can gain muscle with weights as low as 35% of your 100 max. Now I don't know how that correlates to calisthenics as it pertains to your body weight, but just know that if I'm doing weighted dips, reps of 20 to failure, it's the same effect as doing a decline bench press with like 250 or something, at least for my level of strength. Just that here, I'm getting more of a way to stretch. And here you can see the side angle. Because the dip bars are low, I got the feet a little bit more in front of the body, Similar to the Gerona dip, but the arm placement's obviously not the same. And what I really like about the park is that the grip width is on point. Because at the gym, they tend to be a little bit too wide. So this is a lot more comfortable on the shoulders. And you do feel the triceps more. So here's the final set of the chins. Wow. These were really, really hard. And because of the muscle ups, you don't realize how tired you are, including the grip. If you look at these pull-up bars, they're thicker than the normal ones. So using your own attachment is certainly helpful. But you can see right here, the struggle. I get five, 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 and the last reps were always the failure and not the cleanest. And here's the final set of the dips, and you can already see the pump is kicking in. Arms are looking swole, and I was getting this deep contraction that I can't explain. It's not that metabolic fatigue that you guys are used to. It's like an intense feeling of weakness where your muscles are like really tense and almost sore, but they're not. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but these dips certainly made me feel that way, especially when you're grinding it out at the end. All right, the next superset. We're done for vertical pulls. There's more than enough volume. Now we're gonna hit some feet up weighted inverted rows. So I actually brought my own plyometric box just so I can get this angle in. Now I'm using gymnastic rings, but you don't have to. It can be a bar and a power rack or those bars that I normally use right in the background. The reason why I chose rings is because why not suspend them on the top of a pull-up bar and you have that neutral grip. It's a lot more comfortable. You can get more of a range of motion. Honestly, this is the superior way of doing inverted rows. So I'm actually pleased because I got a little bit stronger here. This weight used to be difficult for reps of 10 to 12. Now I'm hitting 15s with it and the form is pretty clean. Then we got the decline close grip push-up. Could be diamond or super close to it. 
This right here will demolish your upper chest and triceps and is one of my favorite ways of doing so with calisthenics. So the grip width lines up your arm path with the direction of the upper chest fibers. Then with the feet up, that inversion is the same position as doing a low incline straight weight press. So the hypertrophy effects are pretty much the same. And the triceps, wow. I think diamonds really are one of the secrets. Like it beats the close grip bench, since there's a lot more elbow extension and you're mechanically disadvantaged. So back to the inverted rows. This is going to demolish your upper back. I used to do these a lot last year when I first ditched the barbell row. And it was one of the best moves I ever did in my life because I was getting thicker without the lower back stress. So I should probably throw them in again. Now that I'm back doing these calisthenics workouts to a certain extent, why not train more like a hybridized athlete? After all, I excel at both and there will come a time where I'm gonna have to rotate through those ghetto variations I keep doing. Plus it's nice outside. Actually, in this workout, there was a freaking heat wave, which is why I came out, because I knew nobody was gonna be training out here. But I soon regretted it because I now have a massive sunburn, which you'll probably see in upcoming videos. And it's very difficult to keep your focus when you're completely exhausted due to the heat. So it's important to hydrate. I had about three liters of water throughout this entire session, which isn't that long, mind you. Like we're taking three minutes of rest between sets. Shouldn't be too time consuming. It's really efficient and effective. So here's the last set of the push-ups. You can see the delts and tries are exploding and my thumbs are not literally touching. But if you look at the arm bend, it's still a super narrow positioning. Like I can't do this with a straight bar without experiencing wrist pain. I need to use a super long easy bar if I want that maximum tricep stimulation. And on that note, how about we talk about getting bigger arms through isolation? This is what actual calisthenics experts recommend. Not the minimalists who say, just do your push-ups and dips, brah. No, here is how you actually demolish the long head. Getting that weighted stretch. It's the same as doing the overhead cable extension, literally. And you can scale difficulty by straightening out your legs for the back and then even elevating them. Like that's the ultimate level. And then for biceps, we got curls. Don't rely on chin-ups exclusively. That's a big mistake, man especially since you don't have to go really heavy on these like ring curls in a high position are difficult, particularly if you do them one arm at a time. With two, that's an easier regression, but the way I'm showing you, wow. It's like I'm using heavy dumbbells, feels exactly the same. And you can see that I often struggle to get even 10 reps. So what does that indicate? It's scalable and effective. So you can just lean back further or eventually get down on the floor, which would be the ultimate level. Plus you can wear a weight vest. So if you can get three sets of 10 with your body weight, well, why not add 10 pounds to your frame? And now we're talking. Back to the tries, see the angle I'm working with? Keep everything rigid, a little bit of posterior pelvic tilt, you can feel less in your abs if you do it that way. Here's the final reps, just struggling, showing your failure. Look at those arms, they've gotten bigger, haven't they? You can see the struggle. This is what body weight training can do for you guys. Last set of triceps, full range of motion, and you can see that my arms are not tucked in. This is a cue that's often prescribed, but it's wrong, particularly for long head development. You want external rotation. Don't fight your own mechanics. And what I can say is that from doing this on other movements in the gym, it just came naturally on the ring extensions. Plus you can widen them out to really get that customized feel. With that said guys, I bring you the final set of the curls. You can see the pump. I'm looking really good at this weight, very happy with the results overall. And this was a sick workout. All the essential compounds, no fluff, and then we finalize with some arms. What more do you want? This is how you'll get swole from calisthenics. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.